Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. So, today I'm supposed to continue our PSM, but uh, I could not get time to do the revision of, I mean, prepare the notes. So, ENT, we have 2,500 points. Dr. Chandrasekhar is going to teach and do the revision of ENT. So today I'll do a quick revision of around 75 points to make a beginning, right? So let's make the great beginning. Can the online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear for everybody? Uh, can you please kindly check whether the voice is loud and clear? Is the voice clear? Okay. All right. So thank you to Dr. Teja for coming for the evening class. I was always thinking while driving, oh my God, do I need to teach the walls today? And uh, luckily Teja has come to the live class. So we have around seven online classmates uh, across the country, very good attendance. So please don't forget every day, every day, Either me or one of the teacher delivers the class 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and on Sunday morning 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. there is a um, full-scale grant test. We give you the question paper. If you are from Hyderabad, please visit our Nampali Center. And uh, if you are online, you can take an online test. Then uh, we have a discussion from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. So across the year, so our program extends 48 Sundays, 48 grant tests and discussion, and 48 weeks, every day, Monday to Saturday revision of totally 60,000 uh, high yield points. So let's make the great, great beginning of ENT. Oracle is made up of what type of cartilage? Yellow elastic cartilage, except the lobule, we don't have the cartilage. It is absent. Now, if you look at the cartilage of the pinna, it is continuous with the cartilage of the external auditory canal. And the cartilage of the pinna is covered with the skin and the skin is loosely attached on the lateral surface. I mean, closely attached on the lateral surface, but slightly loosely attached on the medial surface. And the cartilage itself is avascular. And most of the blood supply and nutrients that the cartilage gets is from the perichondrium, which is covering the cartilage. That's a point you need to appreciate. Now, if you strip the perichondrium from the cartilage of the pinna, typically in the boxing injuries, if you are being hit, then the perichondrium and cartilage become stripped out of each other. And that lead to hematoma and bleeding and that lead to necrosis of the cartilage because cartilage is a vascular. Cartilage gets its blood supply from the overlying perichondrium. So if there is any stripping that happens, then that lead to a vascular necrosis of the elastic cartilage. And this is called boxer's ear. Boxer's ear is what you need to basically understand. Simba concha. So what is Simba concha? It is this area which is called concha. Typically between the crest of the helix and the anti-helix. Right? Between helix and anti-helix you have it. And why do you need to know Simba concha? Because it is, a, it is a important landmark. 
for the mastoid antrum is what you need to remember. And you can feel the McEwen's triangle under the Simba Conca. Under the Simba Conca, McEwen's triangle is there. So that is the reason you need to basically remember. Now, doctor. So where is mastoid antrum? So mastoid antrum is that all air space containing area of the mastoid. It lies one centimeter deep to the McEwen's triangle. So what is the other name for McEwen's triangle? It is also called supramiatal triangle is what you need to remember. So one of the favorite MCQs in the tomorrow's exam is what are the boundaries of the supramiatal triangle? Superior border is the supramastoid crest. Anterior border is the supramiatal spine of Henley. And posterior border is a line which is tangential to the posterior border of the external auditory canal. So this is the external auditory canal, posterior border of the external auditory canal. The line which is tangential forms the posterior border is what we have to emphatically Remember, then there is something called incisura terminalis. What is this? So you have the tragus of the ear and uh, the ascending crust of the helix. This is the spine of the helix. This is the tail of the helix. And this is the ascending crust of the helix. Between that and the tragus, this is tragus, this is anti-tragus. Right? So, that is the place which is called incisura terminalis, is what you need to basically remember. And the incisura terminalis is devoid of the cartilage, is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, what is the importance of incisura Terminalis that you need to remember. Typically, if you do an incision through the incisura terminalis, it does not cut through the cartilage. That's the reason whenever you are approaching the ear, endoral surgery, incisions are made through the incisura terminalis and you should know where exactly is the incisura terminalis located is what I want to underscore to all of you. Of course, tomorrow when you become dermatologist, you don't need incisura terminalis. You will forget even about the lobule of the ear also. Tomorrow if you are a cardiologist, all this gyan is a waste. Still, for entrance exam, there are 2,500 high yield facts. You have to hold your uh, heart strongly and need to master these 2,500 points. You will take around 25 hours of time that you need to invest with Dr. Murli or Dr. Chandrasekhar, who will do the revision of these 2,500 points. Now, what is the narrow supply of the extrinsic muscles of the pinna? Typically, they are, it is supplied by the facial nerve. So auricularis anterior, auricularis superior, auricularis posterior, these are all what? extrinsic muscles of the pinna and typically supplied by the facial nerve is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, what is the innervation of the lateral surface of the pinna, medial surface of the pinna, you have to be 100% sure about. So typically auriculotemporal nerve, this is all the area of auriculotemporal nerve. Great auricular nerve, auricular branch of the vagus which is called as Arnold's nerve and the facial nerve. So this area is supplied by Arnold and facial. That is the lateral surface. You will promise me that you will master this because sure shot on a MCQ. If something is wrong nobody will save you. Medial surface of the pinna, what is the innervation? Lesser occipital nerve supplies the upper part. Most of the 
medial surface is supplied by the great auricular nerve chart go carefully then uh, auricular branch of the vagus and the facial nerve they supply the medial surface that's what you need to understand okay doctor ye batti marne wale list mein dal do babu point number 9 and point number 10 okay so tomorrow's exam you will remember dr murali varadwaj just 2500 points which i give you in the notes so please remember we are we have create we are creating 2500 pages of notes covering 60000 points totally 60 covering 19 subjects subjects like ent ophthalmology they have 2000 to 2500 points that you need to master general medicine general surgery gynops they have about 8000 points each 8000 8000 8000 points to master so totally count is 60000 60000 points master karne ke liye 100 points per hour is your rohit sharma strike rate right cricket mein strike rate you require 600 hours time after that out of the 60000 points 25000 points you don't need to do second revision then there are about uh, another 25000 points at least one second revision needed and around 10000 points last 30 days ka revision your job is simply uh, 600 hours for first round and 25000 points 250 hours per second round and another 100 hours for the last round so 850 plus 100 950 at most 1000 hours may you should get a rank below 1000 that should be the goal and if you don't do this strategically and say that this video coaching is good that the app is good this pop is good what should be good you should be good you should know are how will i remember the lymphatic drainage how will i remember the innervation on the lateral surface medial surface you should remember and reproduce in the exam so please don't forget every sunday morning 9 am we have a grand test if you take grand test you will become challenged you will get challenged if you participate in discussion you will become alert that these are the points that i need to master so that is a simple preparation up you give me a grasshopper i can make it a pg topper if 1000 hours if it's life span it gives to me right ha huh. so lymphatic drainage of the pinna comes from the posterior surface the lymph node at the mastoid tip and upper deep cervical nodes now there are some grafts in rhinoplasty the cartilage of the concha conchal cartilage it is used to correct a depressed nasal bridge right conchal cartilage for depressed nasal bridge similarly in the tympanoplasty when the tympanic membrane is perforated you want to cover it up you can use the tragus cartilage conchal cartilage and the pericardium you can use it during the tympanoplasty is what you need to remember now doctor the world's disgusting question length of external auditory canal in exam hall don't imagine that you will put a finger and then check huh? so 24 to 25 mm that means around 2.5 cm is the length of the external auditory canal external auditory canal has a lateral outer one third 8 mm which is cartilaginous and medial two third which is around 16 mm is bony part osseous part 
So this you have to be very, very sure about now. Simple things, but they matter a lot in the tomorrow's entrance exam. Now, S-shaped curve is the shape of the external ventricle. It's not simply a straight tube. So you have pars interna anteriorly and inferiorly, pars media posterior and superiorly, and pars externa anteriorly and superiorly. So this is how external artery canal is. Yes, shaped. That's the reason simply your finger cannot go inside. It has to negotiate through yes, shaped path. So from where does the external artery canal develop from? It develops from the first brachial cleft. Brachial groove is what you need to remember. And the cartilaginous part of the external artery canal, lateral one third is there, no? Ah, it has got fissures, deficiency in the floor. And they are called fissures of centaurine, is what you need to remember. And why do you need to remember fissure of centaurine? Because any infection of the parotid or any infection of the superficial mastoid, it can pass through the centaurine and vice versa can occur. Parotitis can occur because the exolantry canal or from parotid into the exolantry canal infection can pass. That's what you need to remember. Now, if you look at the skin, which is covering the cartilaginous part of the exolantry canal, it has seruvenous glands which are the modified apocrine sweat glands and pilosebaceous glands and hair that constitutes the skin covering the external artery canals, cartilaginous part. Now, what is the importance? Seruminous and pilosebaceous glands, which are there in the cartilaginous part of the external artery canal, they secrete the wax. So from where is the wax produced? Seruminous and pilosebaceous glands. So what, it, what does our ear wax contain? Cerumen, sebum, desquamated cells. This combination is called wax, is what you need to remember. Now, if you look at the hair follicles and hair, it is all confined to the cartilaginous part. So, that is the reason cartilaginous part is only outer one third. So cartilaginous part only you have hair, not in bony part. That's the reason furuncles, which are infection of the hair follicles, staphylococcal, they are typically seen in the outer third of the exolantric canal only is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, can the online students can punch whether the voice loud, clear to all of you. Thanks for joining the session. And uh, please mention what is your name. Uh, let us call a roll call so that uh, we will be knowing every day you are attending. So, doctor, the bone hiatus is narrow, right? So, typically, where the bone hiatus. Uh, uh, typically cartilage and bone meet at one point which is called isthmus. And how far is this isthmus away from the tympanic membrane? Typically it is about 5 millimeters away from the tympanic membrane is what you need to remember. Now, why you need to remember this isthmus? Isthmus anywhere is narrow part. So any foreign body which get lodged in the isthmus in the bony meatus is very difficult to remove. That is five millimeters lateral to the tympanic membrane. Okay, so that's what you need to remember. And uh, beyond the narrow isthmus, narrow isthmus. So you have the bony canal, and you have the cartilaginous part, and typically. Beyond the narrow isthmus of the bony meatus, there is a dilatation which is called anterior 
neatal recess this area this area so any discharge of the middle ear basically collects in this recess that's what you need to remember now there is an entity called foramen of hushke so what is foramen of hushke typically in the bony canal bony part of the external auditory canal here you have centaurini right then in the bony part cartilaginous part may you have the centaurini so here in the bony part that is the antero inferior part of the bony part in the children up to age of 4 years there is a deficiency which is called foramen of hushke is what you need to remember suresh what hushke and here what is there your temporomandibular joint is there and there is any chance that to and from infection can pass from the temporomandibular joint into the ear through the foramen of hushke which is a deficiency in the antero inferior part of the bony canal is what you have to emphatically remember now comes the blood supply to the external auditory canal it is a external carotid artery external carotid arteries branches are the ones which go in supply and what is the nerve supply of the external artery canal anterior wall and the roof is by anterior wall and the roof is by the auriculo temporal nerve auriculo temporal nerve right then floor and posterior wall is by the vagus and uh, posterior wall also receives innervation from the facial nerve okay so the facial nerve so facial nerve vagus the arnold nerve and the auricular temporal they all supply the external auditory canal is what you need to remember hitzel burger sign hitzel burger sign is what so typically whenever there is any facial nerve injury acoustic neuroma right so there is something called cerebello pontine angle from there emerge the from the pons comes the facial nerve right and um, uh, from the upper part of the medulla comes the uh eighth nerve so when they are leaving no any cerebello pontine angle can cause the compression of the fifth nerve seventh nerve eighth nerve and all so when the seventh nerve is affected then the posterior meatal wall right external auditory meatus ka posterior wall which is supplied by the facial nerve will get affected so you get hypoesthesia of the posterior meatal wall is seen whenever there is any facial nerve injury which is called hitzel burger sign is what you need to basically remember now let us talk about tympanic membrane abhi aa gaya numeric values batti marne wala point point number 28 9 to 10 mm tall 8 to 9 mm wide 1 cm tall 1 cm wide 10 mm is 1 cm and 0.1 mm thick very very thin one way and 55 degree 55 degree 55 degree from the floor so please don't forget this numerics even if you are the most brilliant guy gold medalist in mbbs also if you don't remember examiner will clean bold you right catch out nahi ho na examiner ke hath mein aap duck out ho na catch out ho na nahi ho na if you are hitting means sometimes sixers they say no uh, maximum 
राइट सो यू हिट एंट्रेंस एग्जाम हॉल में अगर आप बैट लेके हिट करे तो मैक्सिमम जाना उससे कम कभी भी नहीं जाना सो वॉट इज द एरिया ऑफ द एडल्ट टिम्पैनिक मेम्ब्रेन नाइंटी मिलीमीटर स्क्वेर out of this tympanic membrane only 55 mm square only is receiving your sound waves not all the part now doctor tympanic membrane is basically shiny when you otoscopically see and it is pearly gray in color is what you should remember a normal tympanic membrane is mobile and the maximum mobility of the tympanic membrane is in the peripheral part because central part is all fixed that's the reason that's what you need to remember now most of the tympanic membrane contain pars tensa this part is all pars tensa only above you have the pars flaccida that's what you need to remember now this pars tensa also it is thickened peripherally peripherally if you take it is thickened and that forms annulus tympanicus which is a cartilaginous ring is what you need to understand so when we imagine no people say god is there or not if the god is not there how can all these things automatically form difficult no so there must be some creator who planned thoroughly at least basic level from there we might have evolved ha huh. so pars flaccida what is the other name shrapnel's membrane it is situated above the lateral process of the malleolus between the notch of rivinus this is called this part is notch of rivinus between the notch of the rivinus and anterior malleolar fold and पास्टीरियर मेरियोर फोल्ड नॉच ऑफ रिविनेस इन तीनों के बीच में है आपको पार्स फ्लैसिडा कॉल श्रॉपनल्स मेम्ब्रेन इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर नाउ डॉक्टर दिस एन्युलस टिम्पैनिकस रिंग नो सो वॉट इज मेन बाई वॉट इज मेन बाई नॉच ऑफ रिविनेस so the entire tympanic membrane has an annulus tympanicus but that annulus is deficient uh, typically in the area and it forms a notch which is called notch of rivinus that's what you need to remember now if you look at the central part of the pars tensa it is tented inwards at the level of the tip of the malleus and this point is called as ambo ambo is the part of the pars tensa where it is tented inwards at the level of the tip of the malleol malleus that's what you need to remember and because of this tenting there is a cone of light which radiates from the tip of the malleus to the periphery along the anterior inferior quadrant of the pars tensa so this part is anterior this part is more towards the mastoid posteriorly and if you take the four segments this is inferior segment antero inferior this is antero posterior sorry this is postero inferior this is antero superior this part is postero superior so which segment it is there antero inferior part you have the cone of the light is what you need to remember then what is meant by prusak space prusak space is a shallow recess recess means opening within the posterior part of the pars flaccida so try to imagine three dimensionally so you have the malleus head then you have the uh, a part of the a bony part is here this is called scutum right 
and tympanic membrane is located like this. So, in the tympanic membrane, most of the tympanic membrane is what? Pars tensa. Upper kya hai? Pars flaccida. So, in the posterior part of this pars flaccida, which is the upper part of the tympanic membrane, posterior part of it, the prussic space is a recess, is what you have to basically remember. All right, Doc? So, this is one of the favorite questions of the examiner. Where is the prussic space located? You need to know. So, there are some things in surgery. You need to have the three dimensional look. About 20 years ago, when we were medical students, there was no Google, right? First time I have seen Yahoo when I was a, uh, when I was doing my internship. So from those days, I used to be computer savvy. The first guy in the entire Kakatiya Medical College to own one uh, computer, right? I used to compose multiple choice questions on that computer in the Word document. 256 MB was the hard disk space of the first computer I used. 256, not GB, MB, right? Was the first hard disk space. And that hard disk used to be as big as the present hard disk only. But only 256 MB space, right? So, yeah. Uh, so those days, Google was not known to us. So if we need to imagine three-dimensionally, we need to go to the library, open the atlas, and try to look at the images in the atlas and imagine. There should be surgery atlas, etc. Anatomy atlas. Today, Google images, you have everything. So that's the reason, don't imagine anything. If you get a doubt quickly, chalo bhai, dekhe, Prusak space kya hai Google mein? Aapko sab dikhaega Google, YouTube mein sab kuch hai. Pura gyan hai Google mein. Huh? So, that's what. Prusak space lies between the neck of the malleus medially, pars flaccida laterally in the epitympanum, and above by the lateral malleolar fold and below by the lateral process of the Malleus, they are the boundaries of this Prusak. Prusak space is what you need to remember. So this is the Malleus head, Malleus neck. So neck of the Malleus is there medial. Then pars flaccida typically is lateral. So that's what you need to imagine basically. And why Prusak space you need to really drill about? Or remember about what is its significance. Very good to see eight online classmates. If it, this number reaches 10, I will be the happiest person. Please invite all your friends also. Right? Huh. Prusak space is the most common site of cholesteatoma. That is the reason you need to remember. All right? This is the favorite MCQ of the examiner. Bhaiya, point number 41, Yad Rakhna. Prusak space is the most common site of cholesteatoma. That's the reason you need to remember. And the cholesteatoma, whenever it happens in the Prusak space, it can extend to the posterior mesotympanum. That's the reason you need to remember. And another thing, the Prusak space infection Drainage is not that comfortable. That's the reason it can go to the attic and can lead to attic pathology. That's the reason it becomes a dangerous infectious situation. That's the reason you need to remember Prusak, Prusak space. So Prusak space, most common place for cholesteatoma. And uh, the cholesteatoma of the Prusak can go into posture mesotympanum. It can cause a attic pathology, drainage is poor, three, four points. Either with the yadra
verse. Now, typically, whenever there is any negative pressure in the middle ear, that lead to blockage of the eustachian tube. And that forms a retraction pocket in the pocket. That lead to primary cholesteatoma in the pars flaccida. Because pars flaccida is very flaccid. So any negative pressure will cause a retraction pocket into that cholesteatoma growth. That's the reason we need to remember. Now, doctor, what are the layers of the tympanic membrane? Tympanic membrane has the outer epithelial, middle fibrous, inner mucosal. Imagine tympanic membrane, right? And that inner mucosal, so if you look at the um, exonodric and all, then you get the tympanic membrane and here you have the middle ear. This is all outer ear. So the middle tympanic cavity, outer, outer ear, exonotric and all. So here you have the tympanic membrane. Agreed. So you have a in this a outer epithelial, middle fibrous, inner mucosal, and that is continuous with the mucosa of the middle ear. That's the point. Now, whenever a tympanic membrane perforation occurs, it heals. But it does not heal in three layers. It heals in two layers. And often it is closed by the squamous epithelium before the fibrous elements develop. That's what you need to remember. Now, where are the vessels in the tympanic membrane? Typically, only in the connective tissue layer of the lamina propria, only you have the vessels inside the tympanic membrane. Now, what is the, what is the blood supply of tympanic membrane? Can you check? I think uh, I'm getting a call in that. So, what are the arteries which are supplying tympanic membrane? Maxillary artery. Post auricular artery, middle meningeal branch artery, these are the arteries which are supplying the tympanic membrane. You have to emphatically remember, doctor. Now, if you look at the uh, auriculotemporal nerve, what is auriculotemporal nerve? It is the branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. And it typically supplies the anterior half on the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane. Okay? Tympanic membrane, you imagine the one towards middle ear, one towards external ear. So, in that we are talking about the anterior half of the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane supplied by auriculotemporal nerve. Then cranial nerve 10, its auricular branch, which is called Arnold's nerve, it supplies the posterior half of the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane. Lateral surface is an anterior surface, anterior half, posterior half. Posterior half is by the cranial nerve 10, vagus nerve, Arnold's branch. It supplies the posterior half of the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane. Anterior half of the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane is supplied by auriculotemporal nerve, which is the branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal. Trigeminal has three divisions ophthalmic, maxillary, mandibular. Right? Once more, anatomy, there is a lot of uh, uh, high yield facts we are going to enjoy. Okay? So, aram se padai karo, don't hush mush. Simple. The guy who is a topper, he sat for bloody 600 hours to master the 60,000 points and did another uh, 200 hours, 300 hours of revision of uh, those points that he forget. 
एंड लास्ट मोमेंट में हंड्रेड अवर्स ही स्पेंट सो टोटली एक थाउजेंड अवर्स जो पढ़ाई किया है यू आर कंपीटिंग विद दट गाय and last moment i want to overcome that guy means you should have some mystic power right so that's the reason and you have to give 1000 hours of your life for getting a top rank in the first 1000 ranks if you are not prepared for that mujhe tension aa rahe mujhe kya padhna malum nahi kya padhna hai main batata hu I will give you two thousand five hundred pages of notes, sixty thousand points. Oh, but I can't. If it doesn't come, then the seat is mine. Right? So be sure to give six hundred hours to me, and be sure to spend another four hundred hours into revision. Must automatic seat data. Now, glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve. and the tympanic branch of it is called jacobson's nerve and that is the one which supplies the medial surface of the tympanic membrane so lateral surface has got the under half posterior half and the medial surface has got the jacobson which is cranial nerve 9 which is glossopharyngeal nerve is what you need to remember so now you know the tympanic membrane no doctor tympanic membrane nerve supply agar nahi malum hai to khatam you are out of competition such a standard routine question right ah now epi tympanum miso tympanum hypo tympanum what are these typically the middle ear cavity which lies at the level i mean above the level of pars tensa tympanic membrane has a pars tensa pars flancida above the level of the pars tensa at the level of the pars tensa below the level of the pars tensa the middle ear cavity can be divided into so the one which is above is called epitympanum at the level is called mesotympanum below the level of the pars tensa is called hypotympanum out of the three parts of the middle ear cavity in relation to the pars tensa epitympanum is the widest part 6 mm mesotympanum is 2 mm hypotympanum is 4 so at the level of the pars tensa middle ear cavity is narrowest that's what you need to remember so what does epitympanum mesotympanum hypotympanum contain we are talking about the cavity of the middle ear so cavity of the middle ear is being divided into three parts in relation to pars tensa tympanic membrane so this is tympanic membrane this is all external auditory meatus and uh, let us assume this box is uh, middle ear cavity and uh, this is divided into three segments at the level of the tympanic membrane mesotympanum above the level epitympanum at the, below the level hypotympanum epitympanum it contains malleus malleus is having malleus a head a neck then a neck is having one anterior process lateral process then incus is also in epitympanum it has a body short process then between incus and malleus there is a incudo malleolar joint and also cord tympani the branch of the facial nerve which carries our taste that also passes through the epitympanum is what you need to remember then mesotympanum already malleus uh, head neck are in epitympanum so what is left in the malleus handle handle is at the mesotympanum at the level of the pars tensa and the incus long process is in mesotympanum at the level of the pars tensa and the whole of the stapes is also mesotympanum incudo stapedial joint is in mesotympanum 
And in hypertemperum, you don't have anything. It's only empty space. Now, doctor, middle ear. Middle ear is a matchbox. Cigar jalane ke liye are ek matchbox de do bolte. So matchbox. It is a six-sided box. One above, one below. One front, one back. One lateral, one medial. So there is a roof, there is a floor, there is a medial wall, there is a lateral wall, there is an anterior wall, there is a posterior wall. Six. Each wall has what? You need to know. So if you have an imagination, posteriorly what do you have in the matchbox? Tick, 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 tick. Middle ear ke piche kya hai? Middle ear ke piche. You have mastoid. Middle ear ke aage kya hai? Middle ear ke aage. So you need to be very sure. Right? So let us look into it. Roof of the middle ear is formed by a thin plate of bone which is called tegment tympani. And tegment tympani, how is it formed? It is formed by both the petrous part and squamous part of the temporal bone. And between the petrous and squamous part, there is a petrosquamous suture. Sometimes it can become persistent, unfused. That is called then corner septum. Corner septum is a petrosquamous suture which is the part of the tegment tympani is what you need to remember. And tegment tympani, what is its importance? It separates the middle ear from the middle cranial fossa. From the middle cranial fossa is what you need to remember. Then what is meant by corner septum? So this petrosquamous uh, uh, suture is there, no? So it does not close until adult life. Between the squamous and the petrous cells of the mastoid antrum, the petrous part of the temporal and squamous part of the temporal, which forms the tegment tympani, which is the roof of the middle ear, the corner septum does not close until the adult life. And it can provide a route of access for the infection to the extradural space in the middle ear especially pediatric population. That's the reason you need to remember. So, corner septum is nothing but the persistent petrosquamous suture in the bony plate, tegment tympani, that separates the superficial squamous cells and deep petrosal cells. That's what you need to remember. And uh, the corner septum is lot of times very, very important. Why? Because it is, uh, uh, there can be um, corner septum is very, very important because there can be difficulty to locate the antrum and the deeper cells. So while you are doing mastoidectomy, it can lead to incomplete removal of the disease. So the mastoid antrum cannot, you cannot reach unless you open that lid on the uh, bottle. Bottle cap ke jaise a corner septum reta. A corner septum ko nikale to hi aap mastoid antrum ke andar ja sakte ho. That's the importance of corner septum. All right which is petrosquamous suture of the bone, which forms the roof of the middle ear cavity. Then the floor of the middle ear, what does it contain? It is also called jugular wall because you have the internal jugular vein, the bulb of the jugular, internal jugular vein, and uh, this end, the middle ear are separated by the floor of the middle ear, which is called jugular wall. In the floor of the middle ear, typically there is 
a small opening in the floor of the middle ear there is a small opening through that the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal will be passing to participate to form the tympanic plexus right and what is this tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal called jacobson's nerve now the question comes jacobson's nerve makes an entry into the middle ear cavity from where roof se ya aage se piche se baaye se daaye se ya floor se floor se floor se wo middle ear mein jayega that's what you need to remember so the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve you are able to get the three dimensional outlook very important you know if you don't have that outlook no we are missing the game now what is the story of anterior wall of the middle ear is a very very important question anterior wall of the middle ear anterior wall of the middle ear is also called carotid wall because it is a thin plate of the bone that separates the cavity of the middle ear from the internal carotid arch that's the reason you need to remember so if you look at the anterior wall of the middle ear what are the various structures which are along the anterior wall of the middle ear tensor tympani muscle there is a canal for that then there is an opening for the eustachian tube your throat to middle ear eustachian tube also opens into anterior wall of the middle ear then internal carotid artery internal carotid artery there is a carotid canal so these are the three features about to below canal of tensor and tympani below that opening of the eustachian tube below that internal carotid artery that's what you need to basically remember now you need to know a word called processus cochleiformis what is this so this tensor tympani has a canal along the anterior wall of the middle ear so the canal containing this tensor tympani muscle can extend from the anterior wall of the middle ear all the way to medial wall and it forms a pulley which is called process cochlear formis that's what you need to understand and what is the importance of this cochlear formis process cochlear formis is a very important landmark why because facial nerve is there no doctor this is process cochlear formis this is malleus then this is the facial nerve so the anterior most part of the horizontal segment of the facial nerve is at the level of the processus cochlear formis that is the reason you need to remember it as a landmark and what is processus cochlear formis from the anterior wall of the middle ear towards the medial wall of the middle ear the canal of the uh canal of the muscle uh tensor tympani muscle forms the pulley which is called process cochlear formis that's what you need to remember then if you look at the lateral wall of the middle ear that is the one which is towards the tympanic membrane all metaverse no today is all world is going to metaverse facebook has now become meta so we are going to somebody was writing uh we become immortal on the metaverse looks like after we die also we can talk to the to our, our grandchildren can talk to us then somebody was saying if putin doesn't die what will happen right so or uh, some leader who is a big challenge to handle doesn't die what will happen forever he is available in the metaverse so lateral side of the middle ear lateral wall of the middle ear is formed by the tympanic membrane and there is a small bone called scutum 
the scutum is the bone above the pars flaccida lateral to the attic. Right? This mastoid attic is there, no? And lateral to the tympanic membrane, you have this scutum, which is the uh, small bone scutum. Then you have a round window, oval window. So the oval window and the round window, round window, right? And uh, uh, the two are separated by a small bony ridge, which is called subicula, right? Subicula. Then, uh, so you can uh, relate yourself. Uh, you have the stapes in this location, oval window. This is a round window. And uh, uh, between the two, you have subicula. Then one more thing you need to know, there is something called ponticulus. It is a bony ridge below the oval window. And uh, typically, you need to know about subiculum and uh, the ponticulus because this is the place where you have a small recess which is called sinus tympani. And sinus tympani is very important because it is the most inaccessible part of the middle ear and the mastoid. And the calisteatoma, if it extends into the sinus tympani, very difficult to eradicate. So in where is sinus tympani located? It is between ponticulus and subiculum. That's what you need to understand. It is for entrance exam. You need to have working knowledge. Tomorrow when you become ENT surgeon, all this, every day you have to live with them. Now, what is the nerve supply of the middle ear? Basically, middle ear gets from tympanic plexus. And what are the components of the tympanic plexus? Tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is called Jacobson's nerve, which comes to the inferior wall of the middle ear. And the sympathetic plexus also. The combination is called the tympanic plexus is what you need to remember. Now, the arteries which supply the walls of the middle ear and the contents of the tympanic cavity, from where do you get them? Is it internal or external carotid system? Both of them. So there is one anterior tympanic artery. Anterior tympanic artery. Inferior tympanic artery. Stylomastoid artery. They are the ones which supply the tympanic cavity. The arteries is what you need to remember. And if you look at the lymphatic drainage of the middle ear, retropharyngeal nodes, parotid nodes, and the eustachian tube is supplied by retropharyngeal group once more. So this is the lymphatic drainage that you need to remember. So doctor, that brings us to the end of this uh, 1 hour 75. Actually, 1 hour 100 is our count. That's how 60,000 points are covered in 600 hours. So if you look at the 75 points, doctor, by now you understand. Hardly there are 20 points to 25 points that you need to once more go through. And there are about 10, 15 points that you need to revise in the last 40 days. That's all. Right? So thank you very much for joining the today's short evening, actually one hour only. From tomorrow, we will try to increase our number of hours to two hours. Right? And try to do a revision of at least 200 points. That's it. Thank you.